Dino Fate channel. Checking in. On this episode of the Supplement Review, I'm going to be talking about why the FDA tried to ban NAC as an over the counter supplement. We're going to talk about what this does, why the FDA wanted to remove it entirely from being able to be picked up over the counter, and some of the conspiracy theories behind that process. If this is your first time to the channel, give this video a like, hit that red subscribe button. On this series, I typically review a supplement on every episode to help you decide if it's right for your fitness goals, health needs, and most importantly, that hard earned money. What is NAC and what's it used for? In a nutshell, N-acetylcysteine is used to produce cysteine in the body. You take one pill, your body dissolves it, and it is turned into cysteine. That is a limiting nutrient in the production of glutathione in the body, GSH. So why, after being sold as an over-the-counter supplement for more than 30 years, more than 30 years, has the FDA tried to kind of cut the knees off of people who like to enjoy NAC. Is it because it is bad for them? Is it because it is a drug? It is hard to tell, but I will say that recently, one of the reasons that NAC has become harder to find is because the FDA did some dirty tactics. They sent out a letter to all of the big distributors, largely Amazon being the number one, telling them that they were looking to remove NAC as a potential supplement. So what did Amazon do? They just wiped their hands of it and said, you can't sell NAC on Amazon. So that's why it's very much harder to find. And a lot of people thought that it was banned, but the FDA tried to get it banned in the courts and the courts have since at least at this time of shooting today's video rejected their proposal that nac is in fact a drug and shouldn't be used as an over-the-counter supplement and the reality is it was originally researched way back i don't know 40s and 50s as a potential drug but it ended up being an over-the-counter supplement and there's really to my knowledge no potential side effects to taking NAC. It's not as though you could take too much of it, like say caffeine, and you could have some serious health issues or even take too much of it like aspirin and have serious health issues. I don't know of any serious health issues people experience from taking too much NAC. So why after so many years has the Food and Drug Administration decided to wake up and realize that, hey, NAC is harmful to people buying it over the counter? Well, there's a number of conspiracy theories out there, and I think the one that makes the most sense in a creepy way is that NAC is an ingredient and it was tried in clinical studies for helping improve recovery and response to I don't even know if I want to get canceled for saying that term out here, but I don't even have any of the results from those studies. I'll be honest with you, I don't have any of the results from the number of studies that utilized NAC as one of, an, of a number of ingredients to help people recover, improve, and ultimately as something that would be prescribed to people that come down with the vid, with And if that's the case, shame on the FDA. Why would you wanna take what's already an over-the-counter supplement and remove it, make it more difficult for people to get their hands on if, in fact, it is something that is a potential benefit for those that come down with like symptoms, especially where, as I already mentioned, I don't, this isn't a horse tranquilizer. I mean, there's nothing bad about NAC. There's really, to my knowledge, no negative side effects to taking NAC every day or, or even taking too much NAC every day. I think this kind of falls in the line of like, of like vitamin C or, or even vitamin D, you really got to jack up the levels before your body would have any type of negative reaction to this. And that it would be something to such an extreme amount and such for such a long duration. It's really unforeseen, un unthinkable that someone would do that. So if you are looking for NAC, rest assured, it hasn't been banned yet. It's just a lot harder to find. Which companies do I like? There are a number of good companies out there producing NAC, 
Obviously, you know I love my Nutribio. They do have third-party testing on the bottom of all of their bottles. There's a lot number you can figure out. You can go online to checkmysubs.com and see how this batch was actually tested. What's actually on the label is in the bottle, and that goes without saying when it comes to Nutribio because they manufacture their own supplements and are better than GMP facility and if you want to make sure what you're getting on the label is in those pills that you're taking, hey, I would go with Nutribile. Now, my code is NOFATE2477. That's the code that I use. That second seven is for savings. Let me know in the comments below, why do you think that the FDA has tried unsuccessfully to ban NAC? Obviously, they've made it a lot more difficult to get your hands on, but it is still available. I'm curious if you have any theories, conspiracy theories or other down below. And if you've got any other research behind NAC as a potential uh, ingredient to help save people from the vid when they get it, let me know in the comments below. Obviously, if, if you've come this far in the video, if you made it to the end of this video, you and I are officially best friends. YouTube loves when you make it to the end of the video, so why not go the extra step? Give the video a like, hit that red subscribe button. Isn't it beautiful? As usual, thank you so much for watching, and don't save anything for the trip back.